Now, let's use this template of sort analysis here to conduct analysis of one of the most popular brands in the world, the most recognizable brand, in fact, in the world, in the form of Coca-Cola. I'm sure we all know what Coca-Cola does, so let's try to figure out if we can what the SWOT analysis of a Coca-Cola company would look like. And when we talk about strengths, for example, of course, Coca-Cola, some people either like it or they hate it, they will either stick to it, and they will never drink Pepsi or vice versa. So you know that customer loyalty is something that is one of the strengths of Coca-Cola. They have excellent marketing abilities. So you know, with their ads, with the different campaigns during uh, time so well during the holiday seasons and other times of the year, they're able to capture big markets. So they and they've always proven to have that skill and that ability. So they definitely that's one of their strengths. They also have huge distribution network, sponsorship deals with others, which is something that gives them an advantage over the other smaller competitors. So that would be the strengths of Coca-Cola. When you look at the weaknesses, one of the big weaknesses, and we don't really realize it until we think about it, that Coca-Cola's sole business is beverages. So they are highly dependent on selling drinks. Compare that to Pepsi, more of their revenue comes from selling food items than from beverages. So maybe Coca-Cola is too dependent on just selling beverages. There's also a lot of negative publicity with Coca-Cola and the amount of nutritional damage it causes. And of course, in order to expand, they've had to take a lot of loans and through a lot of gearing, they have to pay a lot of interest. So maybe that's something that's losing them a lot of money along the way. But when the Coca-Cola company looks at opportunities, what are things in the external environment that are going in their direction, is that the bottled water market is growing. So they have their own brand and they sell their own bottled water and that's another way to further expand the company. They can change, turn their weakness into an opportunity and look to go into the food industry and see if they can diversify and also start making money through food. And they also have, in fact, growingly now, gone into making more healthy drinks. So the demand of healthy drinks is something that presents an opportunity for Coca-Cola. In terms of threat, competition, like, of course, Pepsi. And you know that it's, uh, there's not just Pepsi, there's other drinks, there's Red Bull and other that you can drink in place of Coca-Cola. So there's growing competition. Also, most companies now require nutritional information to be provided on a consumable product. And when you put down Coca-Cola with the amount of calories and the chemicals and stuff they put in it, those nutritional disclosures could be a problem. And finally, there's a global water scarcity and you can't make Coca-Cola with water. You can't make an omelet without an egg. So those are the threats. So that's what a company would do like Coca-Cola. They would go through these four facets and see what are the strengths and opportunities? What are the things in their favor? And what's going against them in terms of the weaknesses and the threats? Now, at this point, once you figure out these four, this it's just not enough to list down all the strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats. You also need to have a fair idea of the kind of strategy you need to formulate based on each of these four. So let's look at what the business does when they have figured out all four of these. So with all four of these figured out, the Coca-Cola company and all the businesses need to figure out what strategy do we make based on all four of these. And with the strengths that you have, for example, Coca-Cola, which has huge strength in the form of customer loyalty, your strengths, you need to build on them. So find new ways to get more customer loyalty using the Coca-Cola brand to launch other products and bringing customers to that product as well. So whatever your strength is, you need to build on them. Whatever your weaknesses are, for example, uh, being dependent on just the drinks industry was another weakness of Coca-Cola, you need to reduce your weaknesses. Of course, you may not be able to remove them completely, but you need to reduce it as much as possible. You can't, Coca-Cola, for example, can't stop selling drinks. That just won't be Coca-Cola. So maybe find a balance between selling food and beverages at the same time. With the opportunities, for example, uh, we saw with Coca-Cola that one of the opportunity was that there's growing demand for bottled water. You need to capitalize on your opportunities. So with bigger production units all over the world, selling, uh, making bottled water, Coca-Cola is on the right track. 
and with the threat. For example, uh, with growing competition with other beverages entering the market like Monster, Red Bull, etc. With the threats, you need to minimize them as much as possible. So maybe by focusing on your strengths more, you can reduce these threats that you are facing. So these are the strategies that you build based on the analysis of SWOT. So why do companies go through this tedious process of conducting a SWOT analysis? First of all, it is a rather simplistic assessment to undertake, right? I mean, you just figure out four words, you figure out what falls within those categories and you have three strategies. But is that enough really? Don't you need more detailed planning for having a really usable strategy? That's really the counter argument to this advantage. Secondly, it gives you actionable targets, right? It tells you you need to build on your strengths, you need to capitalize on your opportunities. But it doesn't tell, give you the exact nitty gritty as to how you're going to go about it. It just gives you a direction, it doesn't give you the tactics. And finally, it is used for strategic planning. It's the very basis of it. Without research, you cannot have any implementation. So you get all the answers to the questions that you want. The disadvantages, however, is that you are trying to assess an external environment which is constantly evolving. So you need to reg regularly review your analysis to make sure that it is current and up to date with the, more, the latest conditions. And secondly, these findings may be too simple to implement. You can't just say, oh, let's just capitalize on uh, less competition. Okay, boss, how are we going to go about it? Do you have a plan? So it doesn't give you a plan. It just gives you a direction. And finally, anyone trying to conduct a SWOT analysis, for example, you and I, we were conducting a SWOT analysis of Coca-Cola. You could have thought of a different weakness to what I thought it was. So both of us will have a very subjective view of this. So you need to have a very skillful hand at it conducting to make sure that you are identifying the right SWOT, right strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, trends to be able to make the right strategies with it. But nonetheless, SWOT analysis is a very, very important technique during the strategic analysis process. And I hope you understand now how businesses use it to make their long-term strategy. Hey there, if you like what you saw right now, head over to altacademy.org for access to content around six subjects with past papers, videos, revision guides, flashcards, and academic support. All of this is gonna make sure that you're completely set for your A-levels. So I'll see you there on the platform.